Hey there, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to teach you about sentinel values. Okay, let's go ahead and begin. A sentinel value is a special type of value that is going to allow users to let your program know when they're done sending input, right? So this is a value that won't be part of the input to be processed. Okay, and a major advantage of this is that it allows a different number of inputs by the user each time the program gets run. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this. Okay, so uh, for this example, we will keep it really simple. It'll be a stupid example just to show you what a Sentinel is and how it works. Um, but you can use this in many different situations, right? But in this stupid example, all we're going to do is let the user enter as many uh, numbers as they want. And as soon as they uh, want to finish, then they'll enter a special number. Uh, and that number will be the Sentinel value. And so all we'll do is we'll just print those numbers back to the user, uh, all the numbers they enter, except for the Sentinel value itself, right? Because remember, with the Sentinel value, it's not supposed to be part of the set of input inputs that are to be processed. In this case, in this example, the inputs that we're processing are going to be a bunch of numbers and the processing is just going to be showing them onto the screen, right? So you have to pick a value, some kind of number or, or something else that the user can input that lets the program know, okay, I'm done now, right? So um, for this example, I'll pick negative um, 99, right? Could be anything. Uh, so long as it's not a piece of data that can be mistaken for the legitimate input that should be processed, okay? So here's our Sentinel value, our special Sentinel value, okay? And then the algorithm's gonna go like this. We're gonna start off by, you know, asking for a number, right? And we wanna make sure that the user knows what the Sentinel value is, because otherwise, how are they gonna know what it is, right? So um, you know, I'll uh, call this number, or I'll need a variable here to store the numbers that they enter. I'll call it n, and uh, just keep it simple. We'll assume that all of the inputs are going to be integers, okay? So I will say something like enter a number uh, to display negative 99 to quit, right? So that's going to be the main idea, or that's going to be our prompt there. We let them know, hey, you know, give us a number, we'll display it, and when you're done, uh, type negative 99, okay? So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna test for the Sentinel value, right? So, so long as they don't give us the Sentinel, we'll go ahead and process the value they entered, and we'll continue and get another number from them, right? So it's kind of like an input validation loop in, in a way, right? So go ahead and test for the Sentinel. So while the input they gave us is not equal to the Sentinel, then we'll go ahead and process the input. In this case, really simple. All we're gonna do is just print it back at them, okay? So we'll just print in, okay? And um, then we'll get the next input, okay? So I'm just gonna do the same thing here. Just copy and paste it, why not? It does the job, okay? So that's going to be that. And um, as soon as they give us the, the, the Sentinel, as soon as they input the Sentinel value, then um, we'll continue on with the rest of the program. Once they entered the Sentinel, right? But the Sentinel is not going to be part of the input to be processed, right? And we'll walk through the code here in just a second, but we'll say goodbye, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and see this in action. Okay, so an enter number to display, negative 99 to quit, right? So that's us asking for the number originally, right? Now, if they typed negative 99 immediately, right? Negative 99, well, then we'll just immediately say goodbye, right? Because if they do that, then this is going to evaluate to false, this test expression right here, because negative 99 because negative 99 is not not negative 99, right? So the while loop gets skipped and then we immediately say goodbye. So the negative 99, the Sentinel, not processed, not printed, okay? 
But let's uh, run this again. Let me make one little modification of my code here. All right, I'll put a colon there because it looks nicer. Okay. All right, so let's run it again. Okay, so now if uh, you know, they're gonna go ahead and ask them for that number again. Now, if they type anything other than the sentinel, say six, well then we get into the body of the loop, right? And then we process the input. And again, simple example, all we're gonna do is print, but you can do whatever it is that you need to do with that input here. I'm just gonna print it out. Maybe you add it to a variable or something or whatever. Okay, I'm just printing it to keep the example uh, simple. And right? then I get the next number. Okay, and so that's this prompt right here. So let's say I say 12, right? Go back to the top of the loop. 12 is not equal to the sentinel, which is negative 99. Go inside the loop, process the input, get the next number, right? So I can keep doing this as much as I want. Uh, and the program is just gonna keep running, processing input until I enter the sentinel, right? And as soon as I enter that sentinel, we bust out of the loop. The sentinel did not get processed, right? You don't see negative 99 printed out on the screen here. And um, we go ahead and continue on with the rest of the program, right? Pretty goodbye, okay? All right, so that's the sentinel. And um, to summarize, let's take a look at um, you know, the algorithm, okay? We're gonna start off, you're gonna have to pick some kind of a special value that uh, indicates that the user is done uh, with their input, right? And this has to be some number that's not, you know, that's outside the set of all possible inputs that are eligible to be processed, okay? Because the sentinel value doesn't get processed itself. Okay, once we've picked our special value, then we're gonna ask for the input, okay? Then we're gonna test for that sentinel. And then if they give us anything other than the sentinel, Right, we'll process the input, and then once we finish processing it, we'll go ahead and get the next input. Right, and so long as that input is not the sentinel, we're going to keep on processing. Process, get the next input, process it, get the next input, process it, get the next input. And then as soon as they give us the sentinel as the input, well, then we bust out of the loop. And once we bust it out of the loop, we go ahead and continue on with the rest of the program. Right, so there's your algorithm. Okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos if you're interested in more content from the channel feel free to hit that subscribe button and as usual if you're a student of mine and you have further questions feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours okay thanks for watching and we'll see you next time